So when you wake up in the morning is when that cortisol pulse takes off and something else important happens. A timer is set in your body and in your nervous system that dictates when a different hormone called melatonin, which makes you sleepy, will be secreted from a particular brain region. So let's talk about that. When you wake up in the morning and you experience that rise in cortisol, there's a timer that starts going, and these are cellular timers, and they're dictated by the relation between different organs in your body that says to, to your brain and body that in about 12 to 14 hours, a different hormone, this hormone we're calling melatonin, will be released from your pineal gland. So there's two mechanisms here, a wakefulness signal and a sleepiness signal. And the wakefulness signal triggers the onset of the timer for the sleepiness signal. Now that sleepiness signal that we call melatonin that's released from the pineal comes only from the pineal. Unless you're taking exogenous melatonin, you're supplementing with melatonin, the only source of melatonin in your body is going to be this pineal gland. Now I'm guessing that many of you are probably asking, should I take melatonin? My personal bias on this is, except in rare cases, no, for the following reason. Melatonin has a second function, which is that melatonin also suppresses the onset of puberty. In kids, and especially in babies, melatonin isn't just released in the evening, 12 to 16 hours after we wake. Melatonin is released chronically or tonically throughout the day and night. And that chronic or tonic release of melatonin is known to suppress some of the other hormones in other regions of the brain that trigger the onset of puberty. Now, if you or your child has been taking melatonin, don't freak out. As always, any kind of uh, supplement or anything that you're going to take or think about taking, you really need to consult with your doctor. I've said this many times on this podcast and it's in the show notes, et cetera. So much so that regular cyclic cycled periods of melatonin release from the pineal really correlate with the onset of puberty and early adulthood. Meaning as we start secreting melatonin only at night, that's also when we tend to transition out of puberty. Now, there are a lot of things that correlate in our nervous system, so it doesn't necessarily mean it controls it. But in this case, we know based on lots of data, endocrinology and so forth, that melatonin suppresses the onset of puberty. So the onset of puberty. So supplementing melatonin could be problematic for that reason. But if, you're all, if you've already gone through puberty, it could also have some impact on other hormone systems in your body. So that's why I personally don't like to use melatonin to fall asleep. There's another reason, which is that melatonin will help you fall asleep, but it won't help you stay asleep. And many people who take melatonin find that they wake up three to five hours later, unable to fall back asleep. Part of the reason for that might be that melatonin purchased, uh, you can buy it over the counter in most areas of the world, even though it's a hormone, which is a little unusual. You can't just go into a pharmacy, at least in the US and buy testosterone or cortisol or estrogen. You need a prescription, but you can go buy melatonin for whatever reason. I don't know the, the reasons for the, that um, legality. But it's been shown many times, and now I'm um, borrowing from some items that were in Matt Walker's book, Why We Sleep, where he stated the, there is evidence that in commercially available melatonin, the amount of melatonin has been tested in, for various brands, and it can range anywhere from being 15% of what's listed on the bottle or up to 400 times more than what's listed on the bottle. Should you take melatonin? My personal bias is no, but... For many people, they find that it does help them. And so if you do find it helps you, then just consider what I'm saying in light of the other practices that you're doing and talk to your healthcare professional. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.